All right, so I saw some chat messages on the, uh, um, to talk about the um, building teams, uh, forming groups. I encourage you to do that. Um, also, you can go to our uh, forum, discussion forum on Blackboard, uh, introduce yourself and, and try to find team members there. Um, I um, hope that everyone can join a team, form a team by the end of this week. If you uh, still cannot find a team to join to form by next Monday, um, I want you to email me. Uh, well, not email, but mail me in, in the uh, uh, send me a message using the mail function in Blackboard um, by next Monday uh, if you still have trouble joining a team. Um, so I can do some, you know, grouping, pairing at that time. Also, um, please um, purchase the lab development kit. Uh, you can buy the, the whole kit, uh, which is recommended. Or you, if you already have a bunch of those components, uh, you can certainly buy the individual parts as needed. But uh, I expect that um, you will have a development kit in hand uh, by early next week. All right, so let me continue today's lecture. Uh, so we talked about determinist models and abstraction layers, um, but when we combine these deterministic models uh, in building a cyber physical system, uh, things get complex. Um, the um, system is now kind of non-deterministic uh, mainly because the timing. Timing is not part of the software and the network semantics. So when you write your software, um, no matter what processors you design for, uh, you are concerned about the uh, correctness of the program. So the um, logics, uh, the flows, how you implement the algorithm is the uh, only goal when you write the, the program either using high-level languages or low-level languages. The correct execution of a program uh, is uh, what is the, is the concern in any programming languages. In the networking um, domain, when you design uh, um, hardware and uh, networking software, uh, the correct delivery of network message uh, in all the general purpose networks uh, is that's the only concern for networking, network fabric. Um, so you don't really uh, write about the timing or concern about timing uh, when you do uh, your software design or when you uh, send a network, uh, send a message over the network. Um, as a result, um, things that, uh, you know, when you, are, when you don't concern about time, uh, the program will produce uh, expected determinist result. But when the timing comes in play, comes into play, um, for example, when you have multiple threads or multiple programs running and they share variables, and when you send messages over a network uh, which you know has the delays, and that gets um, things um, out of order and your results uh, are often the time non-deterministic. So this case um, is very common and you have to step outside the programming abstraction to specify timing behavior. There are many different ways um, and in different applications you may have to choose different methods um, <coughs> but we're gonna talk more about uh, that. Um, you, you, you have some um, tools, uh, but uh, you know, it, it's like you, you don't have a very clear map. You may have to uh, start with your modeling, um, you know, define these timing clearly, the dependencies, and then go down from modeling to the design phase. Uh, but timing is really uh, important uh, in this uh, cyber physical 
system de design, uh, optimization. Um, you have to be very um, careful and being conscious about this. CPS applications operate in an intrinsically, intrinsically non-deterministic world um, because a lot of things happen at the same time. In a factory, you have sensors, you have actuators, uh, you have events that will happen uh, out of water or unexpected. Uh, your embedded system should respond to such events. Um, and this is you know, the world. It's intrinsically non-deterministic. So if that's the case, that really, does it really make sense to insist on deterministic models still? That's a good question. Um, we say that the value of the models are still uh, significant. Um, in science, of course, the value of a model uh, lies how well its behavior matches that of the physical system. Um, for those uh, Newton cradles, uh, how those balls strike each other, uh, they follow Newton's uh, third motion law. Uh, the mathematical equation tries to capture that. Um, in engineering, uh, the value of the physical system lies in how its behavior matches to that model. So it's um, kind of the other way around. Uh, you, you want to um, build such a physical, um, such a cyber physical system. And we start with a model, uh, even though the model is not 100% uh, equivalent or matches the physical uh, system. Um, but, you know, that's where we're heading to. The difference or the, the distinctions uh, between the physical system and the model and, you know, between the model and the physical system is called model fidelity. Model fidelity is a two-way two street. Um, it, we should... Um, start with some model, um, even though the model is imperfect, uh, even though the model is not 100% equivalent to the physical system. Um, but, you know, the fidelity uh, should be um, sufficient uh, enough so that we will not divert, uh, divert from the physical system uh, too far. So for the model to be useful, it's necessary uh, but not sufficient to be able to, to construct a faithful physical realization. Um, again, uh, we want to emphasize here, even though uh, the models are not 100% perfect, uh, we still want a model to, uh, to serve as a starting point. And uh, we rely on the model fidelity to give us uh, close or as close as possible uh, approximation to the physical system. So as we said earlier, model uh, is represented with some mathematical equations or diagrams uh, that will uh, describe the physical processes and or the, the things we want to uh, control, uh, we want to manipulate. Um, the physical realization is uh, our target. So we want to start from the model, build um, such a cyber physical system using computational platforms, using network fabric to uh, implement such a physical processes. Um, that's our goal. So the model fidelity, the way we understand, we, um, we um, want to uh, use this concept is that you know, to a scientist, the model is flawed uh, because, you know, to uh, precisely capture uh, the physical world, uh, you have to make a lot of assumptions. Uh, you have to assume the air has no friction. 
uh, and the wires are perfectly you know, balanced. Um, and you have to make a lot of assumptions to make uh, the model um, work or, or um, um, to provide this abstraction. So the model is oftentimes flawed because it's not 100% that reflects the physical processes. Uh, but that's the, you know, what scientists uh, perform um, experiments and advance the understanding of the uh, world. They want to use the models, even though this model um, comes from the physical um, processes and it, it's, it's not 100% perfect. To us, um, what we assume is the model is perfect. Because we start with the model, we would like to use, to build such a model, try to capture the uh, fundamental or the um, uh, most important requirements of the cyber-physical system, uh, the uh, boundary uh, conditions, uh, the fail-safe measures, uh, the performance metrics. So that's what we start with. And from there, we go towards the realization by building this hardware and software artifacts. So we follow this path from the model to the design. So the realization is actually flawed uh, because you know, we're building this um, working prototype, try to um, meet the requirements or meet the specification of the model. So that's what we uh, want to make uh, on the uh, model fidelity. So for CPS, um, the question is not whether deterministic model can describe the behavior uh, of the CPS with high fidelity. Uh, we don't have to uh, argue about uh, deterministic or non-deterministic uh, whether one way or another. The question is really whether we can build a cyber physical system whose behavior matches that of a deterministic model with high probability. So that's our goal. Again, we start with a model, uh, which in most cases it's designed, uh, captured as a deterministic model, uh, given the input, uh, given the state, we know exactly the next thing is going to be. And from this given model, we will design our cyber physical system. Or in other words, we're going to build this embedded system with computation, with networking, with sensors, and with actuators, um, so that this system has the behavior that matches the uh, model we start with. And we want to match that with high probability. Uh, because you know things may go wrong. There are cases that you um, didn't uh, expect or envision at the beginning, uh, and the component itself may malfunction. So uh, there could be you know a non-deterministic thing happen uh, after you build the system. The deterministic model do not eliminate the need for robust fault-tolerant designs. Uh, that's what we also going to consider, uh, res resilience, uh, adaptability. Uh, in fact, all these things uh, will enable such designs because they make it much clearer uh, what it means to have a fault. So the model, uh, as a start, you want to consider all these um, different situations, boundary situations, uh, as much as possible. This will save you a lot of time and effort uh, down the road uh, when you suddenly find out, oh, your design just missed uh, one important um, possibility that this piece may go wrong or uh, the packet may be dropped. Uh, and then your, your system should, um, by design, accommodate or um, cope with such situations. So we have to uh, fix the models, uh, to start with some models. And this course, uh, especially the next uh, couple of lectures, we're going to look at uh, the models. Uh, so next week, we're going to talk about the 
uh, state machines, uh, the as the discrete uh, dynamics. Uh, when we talk about um, you know quite a few examples how we uh, capture these requirements using models. 